if you are a genius and you can write something like the creation, that genius is there for eternity. It doesn't, it doesn't sound old. It sounds new. It sounds absolutely today. The idea of working with that material, which is not spontaneously designed to be a theatrical performance, you have to be inspired. It's like no classical concert I've ever been to, but I think it's like one that I've always wanted to go to. Thirty years ago, if you went to a London concert hall, 20% of the audience would have been around the age of 16 to 22. Since then, there's been a steep decline of that demographic attending live classical concerts. And we think that this is quite worrying. So what Vocal Futures is trying to do is to um, explore ways in which we can reignite young people to be fascinated by great classical music. Our first production, we chose the Matthew Passion of Bach. The reason I chose that piece was that that was the music that really blew me away when I was age 16. And so it seemed to make sense to take a piece that has the potential to really change the way you think about the world. So I designed this scheme for what we call the Young Ambassadors. There's an induction where the young ambassadors, these are susceptible young people who have never attended concerts or attended very few concerts, they come into the world of the Matthew Passion and start understanding the issues around it and start absorbing the music. What was very interesting was we surveyed these young people at the very beginning to find out what their attitudes to classical music were then we just surveyed them again straight after the show, and we, we were very surprised by the results. So when we asked them, did you enjoy the music? Were you struck by the music? It was almost unanimously yes. The next question was, would you go to another classical concert? And al almost unanimously they said yes. So in choosing my second production, I chose Haydn's Creation. Well, the performance of the Creation was, I mean, surreal in the, in the most wonderful way. It was an incredible atmosphere because there was all kinds of people there. There was people younger than me, there were people much old, older than me, there were people my age, people who looked like they've come straight from work, people who looked like they've just come from Shoreditch. Have, whatever, and it was great. And uh, the performance itself, it wasn't like you know, stepping into a concert hall, taking your seat, and then just sitting there and watching an orchestra play. It was a real, it was 3D, it was visual, you know, it was really immersive, and it was incredibly intimate as well, but even in this huge space. Our mission was to try and make you feel comfortable with the idea that you were part of an experiment which was being done for a, the totally positive reason of making the music as alive and intense as possible for you.
one of the things that Susie was very, very clear about was that this is all based on her own extraordinarily intense experiences as a very young person with music. And she wanted that experience to be something that she could give to others. And what I had to try and do as a designer and a director was to create spaces where the intensity of emotion, the fact that you're actually witnessing the thing taking place in front of you, was the real point of coming. I think it's certainly true that we are a very visual generation and the kind of classical music and kind of orchestral concerts do have, I mean they, they are quite a static thing, they do have a static energy and I think that to bring this visual element in into it really is I think the way to step forward to keep appealing to my generation and future generations. I think it went from hearing a Haydn piece to experiencing a Haydn piece and I think that's a really key difference and it just completely transforms the music in a, in a fantastic way and I think it's really the way to bring it forward into the 21st century and indeed beyond. My greatest wish for Vocal Futures is that we really create systemic change in the way that concert giving organisations approach audience development. And to me, success is if we can restore the 20% of the audiences that we had in the late 70s who were 16 to 22. We can restore that and bring back those susceptible young into our concert halls, then we will have succeeded.